Uh, all right, Terry. Well, we are in. Um, it, we didn't have an intro there because uh, I forgot to turn on the audio on that thing. Good, good job by me. <laughs> I thought, wow, it's taken a long time for that to come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but welcome to the show. All right. Yeah. <laughs> How about it's, that? Uh, it's Friday, January seventeenth, twenty twenty. I'm Terry Combs, and you can find me at terrycombs.com. And I'm Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me over at AaronMontgomery.info. Uh, today, Terry and I will be talking employee engagement. So I, I love, in a, in a way, I get to interview Terry today. So that's kind of cool. Or or the ghost that is Terry, because uh, <laughs> he is on the Queen Mary there in Long Beach, I, California. But uh, I am, and, and right away, right after we were going to talk we got a couple more things. But then the other exciting thing today is uh, we've got Justin Lawrence in, uh, and we're going to be talking ThreadX with him. Uh, Justin is a fantastic guy. Uh, great energy and and uh, can't wait to uh you know learn a little bit more about uh, about justin and what's going on with threadx coming up he's he's the vice chair over at sga so we're going to find out what that means too so Absolutely. excited about that but uh terry what's uh, you, you're out in long beach what's going on out there i am and I, and I apologize for my ghostly image it has to be because i'm on the queen mary but <laughs> no amount of, of moving my my laptop around this room closing window well i don't have windows i have portholes <laughs> them, opening them, turning the lights on, turning lights off. Um, I, I think I'm probably on the 1937 internet here. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, if you're really chunky and, and a little bit fuzzy, and it's just the the ghost of Terry past or something right, exactly. of that effect. Exactly. <laughs> I did walk into my room and I was trying to figure out how to turn the light on. Now here, I, I, I tap behind me, and I'm like, what? <laughs> Come to find out, there's some guys working out on the uh, on the dock. Yeah, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, but yeah. yeah. So here at Impressions Expo, and uh, I, I did. You know, they're they're doing a lot of seminars before the show opens. So I had a seminar yesterday at one o'clock, and and I was a little nervous. You know, it was um, ten things you need to know about uh, direct to garment printing. I had about thirty people, uh, which means uh, you know there are a lot of uh, there used to be a lot of free seminars the day before, but they were all paid, and about thirty people. I had. Uh, of course, a couple of people from Phoenix that uh, we we chatted about the low humidity level there, and uh, <laughs> and the opposite had somebody from uh, New Orleans, but uh, and uh, maybe maybe five, six, eight uh, had never been to a trade show before, okay. and um, and then also uh, a lot of people shopping, thousands of questions. Well, okay, that was being a little bit <laughs> <laughs> maybe dozens of questions, but. We, we went well over our time and it was it was really great. And of course, you know, the first trade show of the year is old home week. You get to see all your your trade yeah. show friends. And, you know, one thing, Aaron, that I've been under NDA about that uh, that uh, has been released here. And and um, my my understanding is there are going to be several other announcements of, of new products and new equipment here. But uh, the folks at Epson introduced the the Epson F3070, and that's going to be a a larger direct to garment printer. It's not replacing the F2100. The F2100, I'm told, is going to be around for a couple more years. And uh, this is just going to be the kind of the big brother. It's It prints a shirt a minute, okay. uh, 14 by 16 image, uh, fantastic resolution at, at about a dollar a print. So it's it's got a liter and a half uh, ink bags. The white's three liters. It's, it's pretty incredible. Plus, uh, you know, for for a production guy like me, it does not go back and park after every print. The printhead sits ready, so as soon as you hit the print button, it loads and it's printing another shirt. And uh, you know, the, the Epson same one minute, but uh, some of us who went over while we're still under NDA to to get a little demo of it, you know, we were timing it, and it printed a fourteen by sixteen image in fifty three seconds. So that's pretty was, sweet. It's it's pretty impressive. It's going to be under fifty thousand dollars coming this summer, and there's a, a free plug for Epson, but I was pretty impressed by it, and it's right across the aisle from me. And and uh, next week I'll talk about uh, all the other products that I see that are new from uh, from this show. Okay, yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll look forward to getting that update from you next week. And yeah, I uh, I tried to get the information out of you, uh, and you you were true <laughs> to your word, true, true to what you signed there in that NDA. I didn't even. This is the first I'm hearing about it too, so that's really cool. See, um, I'm trustworthy, Epson. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Is this not a trustworthy face? <laughs> um, all right. So real quick, uh, Todd had asked, uh, "Have you found the 1937 Scotch there on the Queen Mary yet?" I, I have not, Todd, but I have found the ten dollar beers. 
<laughs> Ooh, those sound delicious. <laughs> I do have to savor them at ten dollars a pop. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But all you know right. what? I, I the uh, the bar here is uh, is all Art Deco, mm-hmm. and it's uh, I'm gonna have to post some pictures. It's uh, it's really beautiful. It's it's pretty incredible to see. Yeah, definitely cool. Yeah. All right, well, good deal. Yeah, not uh, too much. Uh, coming across uh, my feed here uh, lately. I got a lot of fun stuff going on myself, but uh, basically I'm just sitting here in St. Louis in the, the freezing rain that we're getting today, having a whole bunch of uh, FOMO about you guys all being out there in Long Beach uh, without me. So, well, um, it's, it's sweatshirt weather here, but it's it's still better than, you know, snow and freezing rain. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So anyhow, you guys, if you'll uh, do me a favor and enjoy a uh, beer or Captain and Coke for me, I would appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, right, well, <laughs> thank hey, you. Before we go any further, let's hear a word from our platinum sponsor. And I'm here, right here at Impressions Expo. What is Impressions Expo? Impressions Expo, formerly known as ISS, is the premier trade show dedicated to the imprinted and decorated apparel industry. They have five shows that are produced annually in each region of the United States, including Long Beach, California, Atlantic City, New Jersey, Orlando, Florida, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and cap off the year at Fort Worth, Texas. Each of those five annual shows also feature over 30 seminars and hands-on workshops in categories such as screen printing, embroidery, digitizing, digital decorating, and much, much more. Visit ImpressionsExpo.com for more details. And while there, use the promo code REGULARGUYSIE for a free expo pass. Again, make sure you visit ImpressionsExpo.com to get more details. And the two regular guys look forward to seeing you there. All right. Well, thanks again to Impressions Expo. Aaron, I saw uh, most of the crew yesterday. They were walking around during setup. And uh, cool. everybody's saying their, their 2020 uh, hellos and Happy New Year. And let's do this all again one more time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love it. I love it. And and all the new branding and stuff like that looks pretty cool from what I've seen uh, from the outside looking in. So. Uh, I, I tell I you what, Aaron, I was most impressed with the, the number of people I saw up there for that day before seminars. I mean, it was it looked like a regular uh, a regular uh, uh, show day with all yeah. those people gathered out there waiting in the hallway to get into the seminar. So, yeah, that's awesome. Good. In fact, yeah, Eric uh, said uh, he's working the, the comments there for us today. He said, uh, I did one to launch the start of the show myself, had a huge turnout for, for the lettering seminar at 9 a.m. I think I read somewhere on his social post that there was like 78 people or something like that. And uh, Mark Coudre had a, a, a event that he said on, uh, on I read on Facebook that had over a hundred people in it. So That's awesome. That's yeah. Awesome. Really good stuff. So well, it's great for the industry, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. Well, let, let's, let's get Justin in here. I'm excited to talk about ThreadX because uh, I get to be at that one. So, <laughs> all right. So let's, let's bring him in. Uh, Justin, hello. Good morning. Uh, Justin is the owner of Oklahoma Shirt Company and the vice chair of our SGAA apparel committee and one of our favorite decorating friends in the industry. In fact, he's got a nice glow there in sunny California. He's out in Long Beach, <laughs> the halo effect. Justin, welcome to the show. Hey guys, thank you, uh, y'all. <coughs> it's uh, it's 8 a.m. here in California, which is supposed to be 10 in Oklahoma, <laughs> where I'm from, and so this is uh, it's a little brutal, but uh, we're here. <laughs> we're You're here. Make yeah, it I appreciate it. you making it happen. So yep. first and foremost, though, the whole vice chair thing, I, I want to understand that a little bit more. Tell us, tell us what exactly that means for uh, for the SGA community. Yeah, it's one of those role. It's really important. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of. Uh, a lot of politicking and who knows who and uh to get to that spot but really the most important thing is i serve underneath uh the the benevolent and uh and uh, ordained lawn winters uh uh-huh. and uh if he gets assassinated then i get to step up and do what he does okay i still right. don't know what lawn does but uh when when i have to step into his shoes then uh You'll be ready. You, you, you'll be ready. I, I know. I yeah. know you can do it. We have faith in you. So, <laughs> do, you, do you own a pair of black shorts? Because uh, I've never seen a uh, real out of black shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have. I have one pair on deck. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> that I'll wear to his funeral. 
<laughs> even at that's it. even at the Denver airport, um, and it was like uh, 19 degrees with about five inches of snow. I saw him walk through yep. the airport in his shorts. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's lawn. Nice. Yeah, yeah it is. Sure. <laughs> Lots of great friend of the show. But hey, Justin, Threadix 2020 powered by yep. SGIA right around yep. the corner, February 23rd through 25th in Scottsdale. And yep. so, so what speakers or, or what speaker or speakers are you most looking forward to hearing this year? Man, so that's one of the richest parts of the whole show <clears throat> is is the talent that um, the SGIA crew so um, passionately curates. And then what one of the funnest things about being on the um, Apparel Decorators Committee is we get to speak into that. So um, me and my buddies that sit on there, they get they ask us, like, who do you know? Who people you've seen yeah. in the past year? Who are movers and shakers? And so the three that I'm most excited about. So we get Aaron Draplin back, which that dude, yeah. he's just... Um, I've said from the beginning, from the first time I met him, um, he he gets it. And you know what I what we try to speak to specifically with the SGIA folks on the garment deck or apparel decorators committee is um, like screen printers are different. We're different than digital printers. We're different than um, you know I call them suits or the corporate guys that are uh, <laughs> you know have huge corporations. We us screen printers are just <clears throat> we do it by our own backs. We're, we like to get dirty. We like to figure it out. We're entrepreneurs. We're risk takers. Um, and and Aaron Draplin's one of those. Like so, when he takes the stage, and um, I just feel like it's one of our people. He, uh, yeah. you know, he's a hard worker. He's rough around the edges. Um, he's he's great to have a beer with. And so he's one of those people that I really really look forward to getting to spend some time with. And one of the perks of being at um, at ThreadX is you are surrounded by not only like industry giants. Um, but people who are, uh, you know, influenced in the industry and yeah. then also like these these speakers that um, none of us could ever afford on our own to come in and you get to hear them and then you get to chop it up with them for a little while afterwards and hang out. And so it, uh, Aaron Draplin will definitely be a highlight. Um, two guys that are coming in that are really special. My buddy, Brett Bowden at Printed Threads, he, uh, he sits on the committee as well. And he suggested we bring this guy in named Jay Bear. Um, and he, he wrote a book called hug your haters. And if you haven't read it or listened to it, um, man, you need to jump into it. It's just talking about customer service. It's talking about how to sell your products in, in an industry like today. And Jay is, Jay's an incredible human being. I've never met the dude, but I'm looking forward to hear him, uh, hearing his heart and then, you know, hearing what he has to offer for us. And then a guy that I got to bring, I'm in a business advisory group in Oklahoma city. Um, it's called Vistage. Uh, it's mm -hmm. where uh, some business owners, we get together once a month, we hear some speakers. Anyways, one of the like A-class speakers that I was exposed to is a guy by the name of Scott Wozniak. Um, he's Steve Wozniak's from Apple's little brother. Oh, uh, wow. That's not true. That's not true. That's the oh. joke he tells. <laughs> uh, it's a really big deal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but he uh, he does consulting and he talks about like culture and company development, and business development. So what's rich is the three people that are, that are coming that I'm most excited about, they're not talking about screen printing at all, or they're not talking about digital yeah. printing, or they're not talking about equipment or how to like, you know, ThreadX classically isn't a, it's not a technical, um, you know, uh, uh, conference or gathering. It's, uh, it's business development, business development. And it's, you know, it's something that I think that all of us that are either business owners or people of influence, Hey Sam, love you, buddy. Um, or people of influence, like, you 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 either influence someone in your business or you are the key influencer and there's so much wisdom and goodness um that is going to be spoken to everybody there and so i'm really really looking forward to it yeah <clears throat> that's fantastic those are those are definitely some some titans there jay bear is somebody that i've followed and not ha ever had a chance to meet so i am stoked about that I, in fact you mentioned his hug the haters book but uh, i just got done with his talk triggers book so if you haven't had it? a chance to, oh it's it's fantastic it completely opens up your mind about how you go about that uh, word of mouth marketing strategy and and just has some really like you kind of you, you read it and you go man why didn't i think of that that's just like <laughs> geez that should be common sense but it's like oh my god this makes perfect sense so anyhow uh, mm -hmm. well i'm excited about that but uh you also have some other uh, uh love Thanks, coming in from your your crew there so good stuff they're so sweet my them and my mom <laughs> <laughs> hey mom <laughs> uh, Mom, I'm on the internet today. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> uh, nice, nice. All right, Justin. So, you know, last two years uh, obviously been amazing. We wouldn't be talking about it right now if it wasn't. But, but what, what were 
you know, some of your real big takeaways from, I know you've shared, you know, that, that this is a different, it's not about the equipment and yeah. stuff like that, but Palm spring or Palm, Palm spring. Yeah. It was Palm Springs. Why, yeah. why did it, we write down Palm beach? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just oh, reading it. Probably there. me. So <laughs> <laughs> Palm Springs and San Diego, California, both fantastic events. What, what was your big takeaways from those? Man. Um, again, just the speakers, the access to the people um, and then getting to uh, like Aaron Draplin was a good one for me. Again, I hadn't met yeah. the dude. I had known what he had done. And so I heard him keynote speak last year. And then we all um, SGI also curates these. Um, they do a really good job of making these environments where um, networking just magically happens. So we have yeah. these like after, you know, happy hour. And then like last year we hopped on a boat and went on a cruise. Yeah. And so like you just get to and all the speakers and all of the uh, attendees and then, you know, extra, you know, like the apparel decorators committee and uh, sponsors. So there's, it just puts everybody in this melting pot and you have no option. Yeah. But to hang out and to talk and to, you know, you know, uh, Ricardo has done a good job the past uh, couple of years of really setting this tone. Um, which I try, I'm trying to, you know, carry on with him as we, as we go into this year of yeah. the idea of you're only going to get out of this, what you put into it. So yeah. my MO, you know, I, I, in some arenas, I'm a bit of an extrovert, but then when I'm left to my own, um, I kind of just like to, you know, it's easy for me to bury my face on my laptop and just get back to work and worry about my own stuff. Yeah. And so Ricardo really challenges everybody. He says, you know, if you don't get out and if you don't, you know, you have the opportunity to get five or 10 people's phone numbers, Social or not social security, social media. You could probably get some social security. Yeah, just get some. Why not? Yeah. You are, yeah. right? yeah. <laughs> uh, but get their social media tags and connect because you won't get this opportunity again. And what I found is like because of that access that I had to these people, um, the the relationships that I already had, um, you know, it galvanizes those. And then the the new relationships that I have, it gives me that when I. Now you can send a direct message to somebody or you can text somebody throughout a year or email them or you see them at a trade show. It's just, it's so different. The trade shows um, are so important. Like impressions uh, is so cool. I'll be here every year. Sad you're not here, Aaron. But, yeah. you know, as as everybody knows, like you you need to be here and you need to you need to meet new people. But you also need to, you know, continue investing and in rekindling those relationships. But. ThreadX and and there's not very there's only one other industry event that's kind of like it and it's pretty different. But the special thing about ThreadX is it's this incubator where we all get together and <clears throat> there's not a distraction of a trade show floor. There's not a distraction of like, oh, what are we gonna do tonight? Who's gonna go eat where? Where are you gonna no? Like we we're all lockstep together. We sit through the same classes, we sit through the same breaks. Um, and then we're just you're in it together. And so it's a truly immersive, true kind of retreat yeah. that is so, so special. Yeah, totally. And, and that's exactly what, what I've always kind of really been so impressed by is that, you know, you mentioned, you know, you've got the, the suits and the, you know, you're sitting there having breakfast or eating lunch or yeah, taking that break where you're grabbing a cookie. And it doesn't matter if you're just two lowly podcast hosts or if you're Justin Lawrence, you know, everybody's yeah, going to yeah. talk together and, and have that's this right. community. And just the learning that happens outside of the sessions is amazing too. So that, that's yep. that's really cool. I appreciate you sharing that with us. So you know, yeah. I remember I remember after the first one, we were all talking and and saying, you know, it was like Woodstock. Before Woodstock, it was just a concert. After Woodstock, it was like you had to have been there. You know, <laughs> that's the way we felt about the the very first Thread X. So yeah, yeah. and. Uh, it has disappointed in the second year as well, and we're looking forward to the third. But Justin, what's uh, what's your encouragement? What do you want to tell people? Here's why you should come to this event. Uh, I don't know how I can say it any differently. I was gonna say, <laughs> but <laughs> that covered it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, for real though. Like again, it's it's about business development and relationship. Don't come here thinking that you're gonna be a better screen printer. No, we're gonna you're gonna come here, and you need to come ready to work. You need to come ready to put yourself in situations that are uncomfortable. You need to be, because there's people, some people will just walk up to you and talk to you, but um, you need to be willing to go sit down, um, you know, at the bar, but with somebody by themselves or interrupt a conversation. Or if you've seen, if you watch two guys podcast and like you've never commented or you've never engaged with Aaron or Terry, like they'll be there. So you need to come and it's your job to like, yeah. Terry's expecting it. Aaron's expecting yep. it. Aaron Draplin's expecting it. Jay Bear's expecting it. Um, yeah. You need to walk up to these people and say, hey, 
I'm Justin. It's nice to meet you. Uh, this is what I do. Um, tell me about yourself. And like, and you just have to engage. And if yeah. you, if you come to ThreadX and you will engage and you just show up, um, man, you will, you will benefit. I mean, it yeah. will be, um, it will be one of the better things that you do for, not only for yourself, but for your business or the people, your colleagues that you're surrounded with each day. Terry, there's a ghost behind you. <laughs> uh, well, that was close <laughs> he's saved his life justin thank you <laughs> so justin all three yep. of the events uh, including this scheduled event here kind of have been west coast uh yep. any conversation about doing an east or a midwest i mean obviously the time of the year i'm not yep. opposed to going to the west coast <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's something that we we debated several heavy topics this past uh, Congress and committees for SGIA. And one, yeah. one of the questions we asked was, you know, if this is such an important event and it's something that so many people need to come to, you know, it's cost prohibitive. If you're in if you're on the East Coast and you've got to make it out to Arizona or you got yeah. to make it out to California. And so um, we're absolutely that's something that we're discussing. Um, I don't know where it's going to be next year. Um, I'm really excited. I have to, uh, I think there's some changes that, okay. um, that are happening that are really, really awesome. Um, Ford, the CEO got up and gave us a really good presentation and kind of lay of the land of where, where we're going from, uh, the SGI, uh, Congress of committees and, and the vision and the direction that they're doing. And so there's some really cool things coming down the pipe. So what I would say is make sure you're at ThreadX, um, Make sure that you're involved. Make sure that you're, you know, you know what's going on with SGIA. Um, make sure you're just involved in the industry. You know, that, that's, a, that's a really easy way to get plugged in. But, but stay tuned because there's some cool, really cool and exciting things coming down the pipe. Nice. Okay. Nice. All right. All right, Justin, before we let you go, tell us a little bit about the Oklahoma Shirt Company. Oh, man. The Oklahoma Shirt Company is uh, the bane of my existence and the love of my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that place there. We have a, uh, so in Oklahoma city, there's 42 of us crazy ram rambunctious Oklahomans that, uh, <laughs> like, like each other a whole lot. Um, and we also like to screen print a little bit too. And so, uh, we're, we're in Oklahoma city. Uh, we've got, we've got six automatics. They're all workhorse products. Tyler, I'm here with Tyler Dummett with workhorse, um, at ISS. He told me to say hi to you guys. And, uh, you know, hey, Tyler. <laughs> hope everything's well. So, hey, Tyler. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're uh, embroidery, screen printing, graphic design, um, and just trying to do the best that we can and um, and give back to an industry that's given so much to us. Cool, cool. All right, so where can people uh, go and register for ThreadX, and and uh, how can yes. listeners find you? Yes. Okay. So um, you can find me. So Instagram is what I do the most. Uh, okay. Justin T as in Tyler Lawrence. Um, it's L A W R E N C E. Uh, so you can find me there. If you want to come to ThreadX, I, I have a few like free passes. Um, it's a really uh, I only have a few of them, but if you'll send me a direct message, then I can get you. Uh, I can get you there. You'll you'll have to take care of your transportation and your airfare. Um, but the, we have a few spots left. It's almost completely sold out, um, and so it's a it's an incredible event. Oklahoma Shirt Company. You can find us on the social webs. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you there. I hope to connect with you in the online world and. Of course, if you want to send me a message or anything, then uh, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what I think. I can promise cool, you man. that. Sweet. I love it. Thank you, sir. Great having you yeah. on and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you out in Scottsdale. Yeah. And Terry, we'll see you at the show here in a little bit. Be at the show. Absolutely. See you All soon. right. See, see you guys. You. Awesome. Sweet, man. That was, uh, that was cool. I always love talking to Justin. I Just, do too. Yeah. You know, having those side conversations with him too is, is great. So You know what I, you love about Justin? He's so enthusiastic about, about, the industry and about about Oklahoma Shirt Company and about you know helping people to improve their businesses. So he's a, he's definitely a great guy to know. And my disclaimer: he mentioned uh, Tyler at Workhorse Products. I do teach screen printing classes at Workhorse Products for Tyler. So that's that's my disclaimer about. That. There you go. There you go. I love it. I love it. All right. All right. Aaron, <laughs> let's take a, a quick break and hear a word from our sponsor, Printavo. Nope. <laughs> Wrong way again. Synchronized <laughs> is crucial to growing your screen printing business. Printavo helps thousands of shops keep their teams on the same page and look professional to their customers. 
If you're always getting tapped on the shoulder with questions, missing order due dates, or just ready to get to the next step in your shop, Printavo is your solution. Printavo allows shops to create consistent quotes, automate quote and art approvals, schedule jobs, collect payments, and now create online stores, all inside one platform. Being cloud-based, you can even use Printavo from home and with remote employees too. Printavo has a free trial and demo, which you can sign up for at their website, printavo.com. Check out printavo.com for more details and tell them the two regular guys sent you. All right. Well, thanks to our friend of the show, Bruce Ackerman, and all the folks over at Printavo for their support. Make sure to check out their software and tell them that the two, the number two regular guys sent you. <laughs> the, the, the number two. I love it. All right. So, um, again, thanks so much to Justin for his time. Justin, you can uh, bail out, get get that show day going for yourself, and uh, have a great day, dude. Thanks a lot. All right, man, Terry. Um, so, I'd like to welcome into the show Terry Combs, who's with Equipment <laughs> Zone, and you can find him at terrycombs.com. Uh, Terry, let's talk some employee engagement. So, kind of let, let's let's get some. I don't the best way to put it is one on one. You know, let's let's scratch the top. I know we've yeah. one of your the things that you wanted to see in 2020 was was more education in this area. So, the best way to get things to happen that you want to see is taking the bull by the horns and doing it yourself, right? So. Uh, Exactly right. I appreciate you uh, making this happen. Uh, I am really excited to actually talk to you about this. So uh, I'm asking the questions today, Terry. So this is the way it's going to go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you going to throw some zingers in there? like <laughs> I will, Since you wrote most of it out, probably not. But <laughs> all right, Terry. So let's start with this. What's the number one most important thing an owner or manager should focus on when it comes to dealing with your employees? And And real quick, though, before I let you off onto that, I also wanted to include, you know, we've got folks in here that maybe you're sitting there going, well, I don't have employees. Well, guess what? You do in your vendors, in, you know, people that, you know, maybe it's a significant other. Um, heck, I'd go so far as to even uh, look at this as the voices in my head. So <laughs> when we say employees, this is a bit more all encompassing. I, I would say it's more about em engaging with other people as a relationship to your business. But well, and, okay. you know, Aaron, it, it, it's that world now where, Hey, you don't have to have an, uh, an art department. Maybe you contract all that out, but yeah, yeah, you are, you are paying them money and, and you need to deal with them, you know, maybe not exactly like you would a, a regular employee, but, but certainly um, things like, well, you know, you asked what the number one most important thing is it's communication and, and communication is, is important no matter whether that person sitting in the hall from you or sitting across country working with you, providing you with, with artwork or, or, or accounting or whatever it is. So, yeah. you know, and, and so many people don't communicate with their employees. They don't, they don't tell them the state of the business and, and, and you need to do that. You need to talk about your business. You need to talk about your business goals. You need to talk about the aspirations. You know, I worked with a company once, Aaron, there were two owners and they never had that conversation with each other about aspirations. <laughs> and, and then it, um, it came to light that one of them wanted to build this screen printing business into this, you know, everybody's heard of our company. And the yeah. other guy wanted to, uh, he wanted to have enough business that he could play golf every Saturday. And, <laughs> and those two, uh, those two things were in conflict. So yeah. by the time I met them, they barely spoke. <laughs> wow. And so, yeah, so this is uh, this is important whether it's an employee or a partner or, or whoever, you need to talk about, hey, where is it we want to go? And, and add to that, you need to talk about expectations. You know, and if you don't tell your employees what you expect, then they, they're just kind of wandering there in the, in, in the forest and, and trying to assume what it is that, that you want them to accomplish. But yeah. um, here's my take on communication, though. No one knows better how, especially once you start adding employees and all of a sudden you're delegating tasks, nobody knows better how to make that better than the employees, not, not you anymore. You're, you're, you've moved away from it. You're out there growing your business and, and things change in, in, in your business and ch things change, uh, you know, with equipment, with technology, things change with, with the customers that you have. And so maybe, maybe there's a different flow that, that goes through your business you need to count on those folks to communicate with you. But if you if you don't ask them, they're probably not going to volunteer the information. So I'm yeah. going to say it again. Order a pizza. Now, I always talk about ordering pizza. So 
if Jimmy John's makes you feel better about it, order that. They make a really good party tray. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, sit everybody down. And, and here's the question. What? Tell me one thing that would make your job easier, better, more efficient. Yeah. And and once they feel comfortable, once they feel like you're really listening, they're going to share those things with you. And uh, and uh, you, it's going to make a huge improvement in your company. But, it, you know, sometimes it just takes a, a facelift of your company, you know, uh, and, and, and if, if you've been in, um, running the business, like do it my way, because I say so do it, uh, you should be doing your job because I pay you. Um, <laughs> it, it might take you a little while to get out of that mindset, but yeah. once employees realize that you really do want, uh, them to participate in, in improving the business, uh, they're, they're going to participate. So. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think I love all the points that you're hitting on there, Terry, with the, you know, communication and the fact that who knows more about what's going on. So part of communication, you know, when we're talking about communicating, it's not just talking, it's also about listening. And, and cause like I said, you can, you can talk all you want. You can ask them for feedback, but if you ask them for feedback and then you just steamroll over the top of them, they're going to stop giving you feedback. I think you kind of brought exactly. that up in, 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 in a way too there. So a um, couple of quick comments here. Uh, drunk on power as per usual. So, um, <laughs> cause I get to ask the you, questions right? today. <laughs> Darn it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, and Lisa says, so true. Communication is key. Uh, let's see here. Christine says communication is so important. I don't understand why businesses are so reluctant to tell their employees what the goals are, what they're trying to accomplish and how the employees fit into that model. So many people are clueless about how they're contributing because no one has told them the big picture. Uh, that's a great point. And, and um, you know, Aaron, along those lines too, uh, maybe the communication is, you know what? We made some mistakes this year. We, uh, we, we, uh, our, our profit margin wasn't nearly what we intended it to be. So, you know, maybe raises this year aren't going to be quite what they, what they were going to be. Maybe you're not going to get a bonus like, but, but if you communicate and say, listen, we, uh, we, we messed up a little bit this year and, and cash flow. uh, it wasn't what it was supposed to be, but we're going to fix that this year. But, you know, I want you to know that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I want you to know that. And I want you to be a part of that. You know, let, yeah. let's do this together. And um, one thing that I always kind of have really started to try to listen for as I'm communicating with businesses or, or with the businesses that I'm involved in is, is when you're talking to people that are the employees and, and, you know, the outside folks, how are they talking about the business? What are the pronouns that they're using? Is it, is it a they, or is it a we, or, you know, so if you've got a lot of they's and then, it, you know, that's us against them kind of mentality. If it's a lot of, we need to fix this, or we are doing well, or, you know, that kind of thing, um, then, then you're on the right track. But if you're, you're hearing a lot of they's, if you're a fly on the wall kind of thing and people talking about your business, then you got to, Got to rethink that a little bit. So um, Nathan says, spot on, your employees uh, know how to run the day-to-day -day better than you. They do it all day, every day. So um, let's see here. Just just reading this one. Christine says, one problem, the voices in my head tend to be pretty critical. What do you do when your employees are too hard on themselves? So Terry, you want to take that one? Well, I think that uh, you, you have to let employees know that, hey, you made a mistake. It's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll resolve it. But if you're that person that comes down hard every time that that there's a there's an, an issue, then uh, people are going to be made, afraid to make decisions. They're, they are going to be hard on themselves. But, you know, <clears throat> there's there's you, you don't want to say, hey, making a mistake every day is OK, but you have to let them um, understand that uh, we're all human and, and sometimes things go wrong. Uh, what are we going to do to to resolve this issue? But. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, I, I'm always been a uh, a kind of laid back guy. I'm I'm never going to go yelling and screaming out on my production floor. I know too many people who do that. Yeah, and uh, and their employees just close up into a shell. I'm just going to kind of disappear over here into my corner where I do my job and keep my head down and and avoid the wrath. And yeah. if you're avoiding the wrath, then there, then you're never making decisions. You're never, you're never thinking outside the box. So correct. Yeah. I don't know. If yeah. And you're just, tr yeah. At that point, when you're avoiding the wrath, you're, you're putting in the least amount of effort to get through the day and still get your paycheck. And, and yes. you never want employees that are, that are doing that because you're never going to grow or get any better. You know, you're, you're going to be right where you're at right then and there. So, right. um, one, one thing on, on that point is, uh, 
there's a book called Drive by Daniel Pink, and uh, I would recommend uh, giving that one a read. But uh, you know, talks of, he talks about a what he calls a Goldilocks task, where you know you, you've got to kind of challenge your employees and, and the people that you're trying to motivate. You, you need to challenge them with a task that is achievable but not super simple and, and let them have that autonomy to figure out how to do it for themselves um, and, and uh, give them the ability to create mastery. And, and heck, I, I, as I was reading that, I actually thought just about what Christine is saying here, you know, I'm, I'm very critical of myself in my own head. And so, you know, wh what do I need to do to, to kind of have a better conversation? You know, so I've always kind of looked at like some of the sports world, for example, they always talk about, oh, we're not focused on winning the championship. We're focused on the process. And so if you're, don't focus on the results, work together on how you fix the process in the middle to get right. to the result that you want. So that that's my take. So sorry to, as usual, Terry, I always jump in where I'm not <laughs> welcome. That's why we're two regular guys. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right. Well, Terry, can you give me a spe uh, specific example of uh, maybe some poor communication that you've experienced in, in your life? Well, I, I do remember uh, taking over a production shop and for anybody new to two regular guys, I've run uh, some, some fairly large production screen printing operations yeah. around the country. And, and uh, I remember, and I, I usually have a situation like this, but this was very specific. Uh, I, I got there for the first day running production, got introduced to everybody. And the owner said, oh yeah, over there, you're going to need to fire that guy. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry. I, I, I just shook his hand. I, <laughs> I know nothing about him. Why is he being fired? Just not doing a very good job. So you've uh, you've talked to him about this, about uh, what you expect, and well, no, but I mean, he should know what he's supposed to do. Oh, should he? <laughs> <laughs> You're shitting on them. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, okay, here's the deal. Uh, I am not going to go fire that guy, and uh, I'm going to sit down with him and talk about what you expect. Uh, of him and his job. And, uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna go with a clean slate. And, you know, when you hired me, you said, what do you need? And I said, okay, you want to end up over here? Leave me alone in the middle. As yeah. long as I get over here, <laughs> we're good to go. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. as, as you might uh, guess, I fired the guy. No, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I sat down and talked to him about what the expectations were. And, and he seemed a little surprised. He, he thought his job was a little bit different than what, what the, the owner thought, but nobody ever had that conversation. So mm -hmm. obviously he continued working there as long as I was there. And, uh, um, so he may still be there. I don't know, <laughs> All right. so, but he, you, you got to the other side though. That was, the we got to part. the other side. We always get to the other side. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. So I know we've all, Heck, I've probably even done it myself. So owners, managers complaining about their employees. What? Uh, all right. Come on. Bring bring it on. What What have I done wrong when I've complained <laughs> about my the people that work for me? Heck, it, Terry worked for me and I may have complained about him once or twice. Worst employee ever. <laughs> <laughs> Best I, friend ever. Worst right. employee. <laughs> I, just, I don't play well with others. No. <laughs> but uh, We communicated but very well. We did communicate. <laughs> and hey, we made a lot of money. So, <laughs> that's right <laughs> and ate a lot of chicken wings so <laughs> <laughs> but okay here's here's the thing that every employee should should know and remember and I, I think most employers don't realize this nearly every employee that comes to work comes to work wanting to do a good job and i'm going to say that again they come to the work and they want to do a good job almost every employee so yeah. uh, if you if you are complaining about your employees attitudes their work ethic the quality of their work look in the mirror it's you it's not them they 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 came wanting to do a good job but uh for instance if every bit of praise you give is ended with the word but you're micromanaging you're not allowing those people to to grow in the business you know yeah. you did a great job today but you should have done this instead. Um, don't be that person. Just cut off the butt and the rest of it and just say, hey, you did a great job today. And, and let them go home happy and come to work the next day, excited to come to work. Because, and we've talked about this over and over again, Aaron, the personality of your business, the attitude of your employees, the way customers see your business is a reflection of you as the owner or manager. 
And and so when you call someplace and they do the, can you please hold? And they've already got you on hold. That's the way the owner or manager treats those people as well. You know, cutting them off. I don't have time for this. Uh, so you, you have to look in the mirror when, when somebody, and I, and I hear it all the time. I just, last week, somebody was on the phone with me and he goes, um, I'm in the, in the Midwest opening up a new warehouse and, yeah. you know, things aren't going great back on the West coast, but you know, employees, you know how they are. And I'm thinking, I know how you are. Just <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've got that figured out right already. So. <laughs> right. right. So no. So when you run into me at a trade show, do not open with my employees. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I used to do that too. Oh, Terry, it's so hard to work with him. Man, yeah. it just yeah, yeah. over and over and over. Kidding. It, it, it was it was my fault, not yours. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally not your fault. We had a blast, and uh, uh, I just love the fact that I get to say that you. I don't know. I don't think you actually worked for me. I just like to think that. So I appreciate you letting me uh, be drunk on power, <laughs> as Christine put it cool. so well. Back right to Christine, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so Terry, let's talk some motivation. How uh, how is that done? How do we motivate well, people? It, here, here is the the natural thing that people do. You, you gravitate to the, the, the people that are, that are causing trouble, the bad kids, and you're focusing on making them be good kids, where you should be over here focusing on the people that have never called in sick. They're always there when the, when the bell rings in the morning. Yeah. It, it, some, a job's not done. They're the first one to say, I'll, just, I'll stay tonight. I'll get it done. Uh, you, know, you assume they're going to be there doing their job. All the focus should be on them. You should yeah. be focusing on, hey, I just want to say to everybody that 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 bill stayed last night for two extra hours and got the job done and and uh, i want him to know how much we all appreciate that well people gravitate towards where all the attention is well if all your attention's on the bad kids guess what you're gonna get more <laughs> bad kids <laughs> yeah that's a good point if, if Law of attraction. yeah exactly if your attention's over here on the people who are being successful people who are who are uh, helping grow the company and, and you talk about it and you praise them, guess what? Everybody wants to be over there. Everybody wants to follow where the praise is. So, and, and, and you know, Aaron, another thing is, is small rewards are sometimes the greatest rewards. And let me, let me date myself severely <laughs> because uh, most people probably don't own a VCR or a lot of people don't know what a VCR is. When VCRs were brand new, I was, uh, I worked for a company in Columbus, Ohio, and I came into work one day. And by the way, VCRs were very expensive at the time. And sitting on my desk was a brand new VCR. And I kind of looked around and the owner of the company came around the corner and uh, I said, what's this? And he goes, I just wanted to tell you, I really appreciate you being here and you're doing a great job. I, I still, that was uh, 35 years ago. I still, to this day, remember that event. Now, every bonus that I got, I don't necessarily remember that, uh, but but that gesture that was... Uh, that was off to the side. It wasn't, hey, achieve this goal and you're going to get this. It was just, hey, I just want to let you know you're doing a great job. So those kind of things. And and I've used this example on the show before. Uh, I had a company I worked at once. I had them write down every benefit that the company offers. And you would be shocked at how many, 75 production floor employees, how many of those people said, when I do a really good job, sometimes I get movie tickets for me and my spouse and popcorn and drinks. And it, it was an expense of about $25, $30. They listed that as a company benefit, not, not, not insurance, not anything else. But so, you know, you have to, um, a, an owner that I know um, said to me one time, why don't my employees think of, think of this business like, as an entrepreneur like me? And I'm, I'm like, because they're not. You're, you're not, if they were entrepreneurs like you, they'd be your competitor down the street. They, they, they want to have a job. They want to uh, do a good job. They want to get a paycheck. They want to advance in the company, but they also, you know, really want to spend a weekend fishing or, or playing golf or hanging out with their kids. And, and it's, a, it's a different mindset. So, yeah, totally. you know, you, you have to kind of think, uh, you know, get into the shoes of your employees. Yeah, that's great. That's good stuff. I, I love the the reward. And I love that you brought up the fact about the VCR that it wasn't like attached to anything. So right. um, I mentioned that book Drive by Daniel Pink. And uh, you know, he talks about that. The the he calls it the carrot and stick kind of reward. You know, if if you do this, you will get this. 
And that takes away their, their motivation. It's like, cause then you just have to, that reward has to get bigger and bigger each time. And, you know, so that that's, whereas with that VCR gift, there was nothing tied to it. It was just, right. Hey, Terry's doing a great job. Let's reward him. Let's treat him well. And, and so it was a, you know, after effect and you weren't expecting it and it wasn't something that, you know, motivated you to do better. But what it did is it was just a tangible way of him showing you that he cared about you and, and what you were doing and, and that you were doing a good job. So um, exactly. Terry, before we keep going here, Terry, there's some great comments that I want to make sure that we get to. Um, we won't get to all of them here. So if you guys are listening to the podcast version of this, this is uh, definitely the call to get over to facebook.com slash two regular guys. That's the number two regular guys. And uh, check out the comments and things that are going on from the community. Um, it's tons of great information. But uh, Andy says, I feel showing your employees appreciation will help and they will step up more. Also, being a jerk won't get you anywhere in life. So yeah, just uh, good quality uh, personal <laughs> advice as well. So I love that. <laughs> Um, which follows nicely with Sheila sharing the, the golden real, rule, treat each other as you would like to be treated. Um, let's see here. Uh, Christine says, taking the good kids for granted is also very dangerous. Eventually, they'll figure out that they can go elsewhere and be appreciated, and they will. Um, and uh, yep. Andy says, people will help get an order done and will have a positive attitude when they walk in the door if you treat them as human. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> the great part about all this, Terry, is it's it's actually pretty simple concepts. It's just, like you said, a, a little change of mindset and Hey, these are people just like me kind of thing. You know, <laughs> right. it, it, it's not an us against them kind of world. So, um, exactly. for sure. So, uh, there was some talk about, uh, that you still have a recording of Matlock on that VCR. Is that, uh, <laughs> can we confirm or deny? <laughs> <laughs> Christine actually shared that, uh, that she actually spit water at her computer over that one. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, and, and Todd does say <laughs> that he figured you, you're more of a Matlock than a murder. She wrote kind of guys. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love every bit of that. All right, Terry. So and there are how, people listening who say, I don't know who either of those people are. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, Hey, we do. So I, I do as well. <laughs> uh, all right, Terry. So how about that one employee that you see in the break room? You just, keep walking through the other door, like you're going someplace <laughs> right. else, you know? I, yeah. You, you kind of want to avoid that. I I've, I've had that where it's kind of like uh, the gray cloud. I'm going to just uh, walk away. So what, <laughs> well, <you laughs> what know, is that? You know, in, in, in a lot of, you know, when I talk about this in seminars, I always see, you know, business owners looking at each other kind of grinning like, Oh yeah. You know, Jill or Bob or Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a, but you have an employee that's a black cloud, you know, uh, here's, here's a little tip for you. According to every state law, every province law, anywhere you listen to this in the world, uh, there is a, there is no uh, protected class called crappy attitude. So <laughs> <laughs> I like you it. Can, you can let somebody go that, and, and, and when that person's gone, all of a sudden it's like sunshine rolls in and, yeah. and, so if somebody is that person that everybody avoids, nobody wants to work with, you got to sit them down and talk to them about their attitude and, and say, here's the deal. You know, uh, I, you've got to learn to work with people. You've got to, you've got to have a more positive attitude and, and, and it, your job depends on it. And, yeah. and, and we're going to sit down in two weeks and talk about this again. And we're going to sit down two weeks after. And because I don't want you to leave, but, I, I want other people to feel comfortable at work and, and, and you are bringing down the, uh, the, the, uh, the environment, the work environment here. And, and I've had to have that conversation yeah. with, with many people. Some of them stayed on some of them two weeks later would just come in and go, no, I'm not doing this. I'm, I, I'm done. And, and just walk out. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think that's a really interesting point for sure, Terry. You know, you, you kind of mentioned, you know, and if they aren't able to turn around and, and they, you know, do leave, you know, it, it, it does change the whole environment it, to, you know, I like to call it addition by subtraction, you know, yeah. and, and a lot of times you're, you're like, oh, well, we, 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 but we, we need that person, you know, that they're doing this, this job and they have to, you know, we have to have that, give it a try, test it or, out, check yeah. it out. <laughs> when, or, Cause or, when, go ahead, Terry, sorry. I was just gonna say, or you as the owner, you're afraid to, to have that conversation with them. You got to suck it up and, and, and talk to them about it. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, for yeah. sure. No, I, and, and I, I mean the, the whole addition by subtraction thing, I, I, I wholeheartedly believe in that, 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 you know, if, if all of a sudden that 
black cloud is lifted and you're worried that the task that they were doing isn't going to get done, guess what? It's probably going to get done and it's probably going to get done better because everybody else is going to have more. They're going to do more. You know, right. this is part of this is just being able to get the most out of everybody, you know, yourself included. And, and so that, that's a, that's a really interesting point. Yeah. And, and I've had that, I've had to have that conversation. It's not easy. It's not fun. You know, I, I kind of said, you know, you're always complaining about everything, but you know, is it maybe just the lens that you're looking at it from? Right. Are, are you, you're complaining about this and saying that it's terrible, but what have you done to improve that? You know, what if you were to actually go and build a relationship with that person instead of just complaining about them or what, however that works, you know? So right. yeah, I, I think you're right. It comes back to your number one thing there, Terry, where it's, uh, where it's communication is key there. So, um, all right. Well, so my favorite Bible verse is Terry 5215. Um, <laughs> I think that's in there, right? Uh, and I, I know that, uh, we, we don't want to go into a lot of depth on this here, but, uh, just, just give us that one little tip yes, about sure. training here when we, it comes we, to this. We have to talk about training. Uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's required. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, and, and a couple of points. One is, uh, you, you don't want to share your secrets. Uh, you don't have any secrets. Get over it. Everybody it's screen printing. It's screen printing. It. embroidery is embroidery, direct to garments, direct to garment, uh, cut vinyls, cut vinyl, uh, get over yourself. Uh, <laughs> I like and, it. And then the next thing is fifty-two fifteen training, and I don't want to dig too far into it. It's something that I'm working on as a as a project right now. But but basically, it means every week spend fifteen minutes, gather everybody around to talk about something that in the process. Maybe it's maybe it's squeegees. Maybe it's maybe it's different threads and 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 how they they work with one another. Maybe it's you know a thousand other things. But but take 15 minutes out of your week at the beginning of the week. Don't do it on Friday because you're going to start skipping it because you, you, uh, you, you're behind. Do it on Monday morning for 15 minutes. Talk about things in your business and, and, and how your business runs and, and the technical end and, and, and maybe, maybe even how sales uh, takes orders because there's always conflict between sales and production, that sort of thing. But, yeah. but take 15 minutes every week and, and talk about how to run your business. Nice. So. All right. So the, the gospel, according to Terry 5215, I love it. <laughs> All, right. All right. So Terry, we're going to, we're getting, we're going to get into bonus time. We're going to try to, to get, get through here, but, but I gotta, I gotta get one more tidbit out of you here. So right. what's one thing an owner and manager can do to change the, their work environment, their level of stress, really, you know, I mean, I think that's the, what we'd all love to, to get a little less stress in our life. So sure. give well, us some if, tips. Well, anybody listening right now, if, if you can't leave your business for a little vacation or even to go to lunch, that's on you, not your employees. And it, it all starts with trust and willingness to allow your employees to make mistakes without uh, the wrath of God coming down on top of them. <laughs> and I, I, Aaron, and I worked for a company once where I came back uh, from vacation and one of the owners said, you know, this, everything ran like clockwork. You know, it's, uh, we, we didn't even need you here. And I'm like, well, you're welcome. He's like, w you're welcome. I said, we didn't need you here. And I said, before I got here, could you go on vacation and not worry about what was happening back at the office? Well, no. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> and, and here's how I do that, Aaron. Every place I've ever gone to run production. You know, the as soon as you sit down at your desk, somebody runs in the door and says, okay, I knew you were coming. I've been waiting three weeks to talk about this problem we're having. And my response is always, well, what would you do to resolve the problem? And they have to think about it, maybe come back and tell me what they think it is. And then after a few weeks, they come running into your office and say, we've got this problem. And here's what I think we should do to fix it. I think that's a great idea. I think you, we should take your idea and, and go and follow through with it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they stop coming because we've got this problem. He's just going to ask me how to fix it. I'm just going to go ahead and fix it. So that's yeah. how you can go to lunch, take a vacation, how you can, uh, you can allow your employees to, to work on the bit, work on, on getting stuff out the door so you can work on building your business. So yeah. that's nice. my parting shot. I love it. I love it. Yeah. That, uh, that autonomy that that you're giving them that's a huge huge thing and see this is what i i love about when we you and i get to have these conversations terry is that you know i've certainly been really digging into a lot of books i've brought up drive by daniel pink a few times mm -hmm. some of these other ones and i get all these great concepts and i, I think and i'm like crap terry's been telling me this all along i just didn't listen to him Where so. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I, I i've learned i have to listen to you more <laughs> all right sir great stuff thank you so much for sharing all that and uh looking forward to what you've got coming up down the road with 5215 and everything else uh okay. shall we take a quick break to hear from ace transfer and then we'll come back and wrap this up let's do that all right have you been looking to grow your business or start one in the garment decoration industry after all, that's why you're listening, right? Ace Transfer Company is located in Springfield, Ohio, and we've provided our customers with high quality transfers, competitive prices, and great customer service for nearly 30 years. Ace Transfer Company offers a wide variety of garment decoration services, including screen printed transfers, contract screen printing, direct to garment or DTG, dye sublimation, signs, banners, heat transfer vinyl, pressure sensitive vinyl, and more. Use your own designs or have our in-house artists assist you in creating eye-catching transfers. At ACE, we are dedicated to helping your business succeed. So print your vision at ACE. For more information, visit our website, acetransfercompany.com. Send us an email at acetransco at gmail.com. That's A-C-E-T-R-A-N-S-C-O at gmail. Or give us a call at 800-525-3126. All right. Well, thanks to uh, our great friend of the show, David Shaw, and everyone over at Ace Transfer. I assume David's here at the show, and I will, uh, if you're listening, David, I'll be swinging by to say hello at your booth. Sounds good. Yeah. I'm not sure. He 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 doesn't do a ton of booths, but maybe he'll be there, but I'm sure he'll he'll be there. So um, they've got their location out in Las Vegas that uh, um, I think is a, a good, good place for people to get stuff when you're on the West Coast there. So um, good stuff there. Terry, um, let's uh, let's real quick talk about what you've got coming up because I know you've got to get to the uh, show floor here soon yourself. Have, so what do, what do you got coming up? As soon as I get there. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, my I have my upcoming upcoming complete screen printing business course. I'm going to be at Atlas Screen Supply in Nashville, February 15th and 16th. Workhorse Products in Phoenix, February 29th and March 1st. And I will be uh, presenting tomorrow, January 18th, on the Long Long Beach show floor. Uh, I'm a new screen printer. Now what? And that's a free event, 12 to 12:45 in the uh, in the, uh, the 45 aquarium. minutes. Terry, just reminding you, reminding you now, it's 45 minutes. <laughs> 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 and at Dex KC, I'm going to be presenting uh, on being a great screen printer. That's Saturday, February 22nd at 10:20. And then, of course, uh, Aaron, you and I are going to be at ThreadX, February 23rd through 25th. We're going to be uh, uh, soaking up all that information. We're also going to be recording lots and lots of interviews, and that's yep. going to be uh, ThreadX 2020 powered by SGIA. Outstanding. Yep. So I've got uh, been, uh, in fact, two of our five keys videos of our rsuccessgroup.com are uh, in the books and, and uh, fantastic feedback, and, and you can still be a part of that. So if you just go to rsuccessgroup.com, you can sign up and get the replays, plus be part of the next three live events there. And uh, Todd and I actually have a, a big announcement coming up at uh, 1 p.m. Central time today. Uh, we will be sharing uh, the final details. I guess, well, yeah, we'll call them final details. I'm sure they'll be tweaking along the way, but as close to final as they're going to be for today, <laughs> details on uh, what phase two of our success group looks like. So uh, really excited about that. In fact, uh, I found myself uh, up working on that until uh, 3 a.m. Uh, Wednesday night because I was so fired up after the uh, training we did on Wednesday. So <laughs> it's uh, that, that just uh, really get, get excited. So um, and then I'm also looking forward to heading out to the International Awards and Personalization Expo, uh, not only because it's in Las Vegas and I get to take my wife, but uh, I'll be presenting a couple of seminars there. Uh, Social Media 101, Why and How, uh, Digital Marketing, Growing Your Business with Email Marketing, and uh, we'll also be on a sublimation panel with uh, Jimmy Lamb and Lisa. And I can't remember Lisa's last name for the life of me right now, but uh, she's with JDS. So the, uh, the three of us are going to be uh, talking sublimation. So I'm, I'm honored to be part of that group uh, with, with those two giants. So I'm uh, looking forward to that. And then uh, as Terry mentioned, Dex is uh, where we'll be at next. Um, from there, but that's where we'll all come together, Eric and Terry and a whole bunch of us, Christine, uh, and uh, I'm presenting starting in e-commerce, what works and what didn't. And uh, from the lessons that uh, my wife and I have building her business, weheart.biz, and, and kind of sharing some of the mistakes that we made along the way and how you can maybe avoid those. So looking forward to that. And just really excited to be at DAX. Uh, Decorators Community has a booth there on the show floor 
So we'll be capturing a bunch of stuff there, you know, just come in, we'll have set up, sit down, chat with us, uh, be on <laughs> just, just a great community environment. We'll be next to Clay from Corel Trainer. So do, he's got lots of great stuff going on over there. And we've got a, a panel discussion that we'll be hosting both days at Ask an Expert. So uh, we're getting details on that together. Excited about all that. Um, Andy says, I'll see you at DAX. So yeah, looking forward to it, Andy. And uh, Christine, can't wait until DAX. So th th good stuff. And then, like I said, ThreadX after that. So uh, I'm I'm going to be Terry Combsing it, I'm calling it nowadays, uh, where I am packing up a suitcase and I will uh, <laughs> pretty much be living out of it for a while. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and then don't want to forget, uh, Eric's got uh, Demystifying Digitizing tizing webinar that we're putting together that's going to be happening march 28th so that's uh right around the corner so uh you know don't uh, <laughs> don't sleep on that make sure you get over to ericcampbell.com slash demystifying dash digitizing dash webinar and uh, get signed up for more information there uh terry has you have your uh, event coming up in april where you will be doing a five-part series so i'm really excited to uh see all that come together and help uh, any way that i can there so that'll be fantastic all right um so yeah i think that that covers us so we're we're, we're good um so i want to uh we've come to that close of the show terry let's let's wrap it up <laughs> <laughs> all right hey, we want to thank our show producer eric campbell you can find him at ericcampbell.com and to our sponsors impressions expo Printavo and Ace Transfer Company. Yep. And next week we'll be uh, welcoming back Henry Ma with Racoma. And uh, I think uh, since we had him on the show last time, he's actually been uh, promoted within the company. I think he's the, we'll get the exact, but uh, I thought it was CEO or something like that, that uh, he's become of Racoma USA. So looking forward to talking to him and uh, we're, we're going to talk employees again. Uh, and we're going to talk about hiring for your custom apparel business. So, uh, yeah, Terry, you put it out there that you want something. Boy, we we make it happen. I love it. It's, it's flooding, <laughs> flooding in. Exactly. All yeah. right. Hey, until then, I'm Terry Combs. He's Aaron Montgomery. And we are the Two Regular Guys. Thank you for listening to Two Regular Guys. Check out our website at tworegularguys.com. That's the number two, regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash two regular guys, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash two regular guys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, two regular guys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.